Grandpa, Grandma, I'm home. No, you're home. Yes. Ah, <laughs> there's my favorite granddaughter. <laughs> Grandma, hmm. why isn't my aunt home yet? I haven't seen her in a long time. Oh, you'll see her soon. That's great, that's great. <laughs> hey, darling. Yes? Did you stew the chicken I bought? Don't worry, everything's ready. Ah. Back to stewing. <laughs> okay. Ah. <sighs> Grandpa? Yes? You're reading the Bible again? Hmm, we believe in the Lord, so we have to read it often. And no, mm. you need to study the Bible too. So in the future, you can preach and work for the Lord, like your aunt. Grandpa, I memorize lots of Bible verses. Really? Then recite one for me. I'll mm. recite one. You always say. Sure, okay. Good. <laughs> <laughs> for with the heart man believes to righteousness. Ah. Ah. Mm. And with the mouth confession is made to salvation. Look at her. Look at my granddaughter. Huh? Ha, you could take over his work. Mm. Dad, Mom, I'm home. Aunt Sled. No, come give me a hug. Uh, You're taller than ever. Aunt give her some space. Yeah, that's for you. Thanks. Mom. Hey, it's so good to finally have you home. Dad, how's so, you been? Very good. Good. Soon, hmm? you're thinner. I am. <laughs> but there's good color in your Thanks. face. Hey, now, let her sit down and talk. I'm too excited. No, go get some fruit, huh? Okay. Soon. Dad. You've been gone for six months now, yes? Yes, I have. I bet you've gained a lot, yes? Tell us about it. <laughs> oh, come right. on. Let her catch her breath first. Mom, no I need. know. <laughs> Here, sit. Mom, hmm? Dad, hmm? I've brought back some incredible news. What is it? Really? The Lord Jesus, whom we've awaited for so many years, has returned. Huh? He's Almighty God. Almighty, Almighty God. God? Yeah. Almighty God speaks truth, doing the work of judgment first with God's house in the last days. Soon. Yes? Have you accepted Eastern Lightning? Yes, I have. I can't believe you. <laughs> Why didn't you discuss such a big decision with me? Did you investigate it closely? Dad. <sighs> that was uncalled for. Huh? Your temper constantly changes. I... <sighs> Our daughter just walked in the door. Be nice if you're going to say something. I'm scared she'll take the wrong path. Can't... <sighs> S -N. Mom, I know you've always had your own opinions and done things your own way, but what made you so certain that Eastern Lightning is the return of the Lord? I want you to tell us all about it. Oh, okay. Oh, just listen to what she has to say. Come on. <clears throat> Dad, I accepted Eastern Lightning. After serious seeking and investigation, mm. I've read a lot of Almighty God's words and discovered the truth. Mm. Almighty God not only judges the corruption within mankind, He also reveals the root cause of why people sin and resist God. Mm. That's God's work of judgment in the last days. Only by accepting God's judgment in the last days and being purified of our sins can we enter the kingdom of heaven. All right, enough, okay? I've never read Almighty God's words, and I don't know whether it's the truth. But Eastern Lightning testifies only by accepting Almighty God's work of judgment and being cleansed can we enter the kingdom of heaven. And I can't accept that. Mm. What does it say in Romans? Mm. That if you shall confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart man believes to righteousness, and with the mouth confession it. is made to salvation. We are called righteous by our faith in the Lord and saved by grace. When the Lord comes, he will rapture us up to the kingdom of heaven, and he... Hey, Dad. <coughs> what are you doing getting so angry? How could I not be angry about such a big issue? His temper is too much. Dad, have some water. You're so Grandpa, stubborn. don't be mad. Don't be mad. Sit down. Don't you always say we should be humble and tolerant? Please don't get sick from being angry. <laughs> Noah's a smart girl. <laughs> Noah, don't worry. I won't get angry, yes? Now, go do your homework in your room. Okay. Remember, be humble and tolerant. Uh, okay. What a good girl. Dad, have some water. Sa'en, your father is right. All we have to do is keep the Lord Jesus' name and believe the Lord Jesus is our savior and we can enter the kingdom of heaven. No one can deny that, right? Mom, Dad, it's true that believing in the Lord will gain us salvation, but does this mean we can enter the kingdom of heaven? Did the Lord Jesus ever say that? Is it written anywhere in the Bible? The Bible? I don't think the Bible says that at all. Hey, Muda, you know the Bible, you tell us. 
Well, looks like it doesn't say that in the Bible. If it did, your dad would have told us the biblical basis already. <clears throat> Fine, go ahead, you talk. Since the Lord Jesus never said it, does the idea of entering the kingdom of heaven with salvation stand up? Isn't that just human notions and imagining? Notions and imagining? Right. Can we base our entry into the kingdom of heaven on that? The Lord Jesus never said we can enter the kingdom of heaven if we gain salvation, but the religious world endorses that view. They couldn't possibly be wrong. Dad, does the religious world's acceptance mean it accords with the Lord's words? Does it represent the Lord's will? Who is the Lord of the kingdom of heaven? Who has authority over the entry into the kingdom of heaven? Without a basis in the Lord's words, if people say we can enter the kingdom of heaven if we gain salvation, isn't that just deceiving and misleading people? Huh? Huh? Dad, do you know what salvation refers to? If you look at the background of the Lord Jesus' work of redemption, you'll understand. Background? Yeah. Hey, Mudan, what's the background? <clears throat> hmm. Huh. It looks like your father doesn't know either. Go ahead. Of course I know. I was just getting to it. You... In the book of Malachi, the Israelites of the time were sinning more and more and could no longer keep the laws. So they were in danger of being condemned to death by the law. Huh. Dad, you're absolutely right. Mm. It was against that backdrop that the Lord Jesus was nailed to the cross as a sin offering to redeem man. As long as people believed, confessed, and repented, their sins would be forgiven. And they could all enjoy the peace, joy, and bountiful grace of the Lord. That's the meaning of salvation in the Age of Grace. Oh, so that's what it means to gain salvation. Yes. So, salvation only refers to having your sins forgiven and not being condemned by the law. Hmm. Well, what she's saying makes sense and fits with the Bible. She explains it a lot more clearly than you. <coughs> Why cough? She does explain more clearly than you. Hey! You're entirely right. Yes. Let's sit down and continue. Okay. <laughs> Dad, we gain our salvation through grace, but we can still often lie in sin, and we haven't escaped the bondage of sin. Mm. God says, You shall therefore be holy, for I am holy. Mm. Whoever commits sin is the servant of sin, and the servant stays not in the house forever, but the sun stays ever. Hmm. God is holy, and only those who are holy can see the Lord. The kingdom of heaven is ruled by God. It's a holy place. How could God allow people who often sin and resist him to enter the kingdom of heaven? Dad, am I right about this? <coughs> Sounds right to me. So then, even if we gain salvation by grace, it doesn't mean we're qualified to enter the kingdom of heaven. Salvation and entering the kingdom of heaven are two different things. Hmm, that's right. Listen to her. Her fellowship is completely correct. Yeah. Yeah. You are correct in saying that we still often sin. But the Lord Jesus' sin offering is eternally effective. Hmm. As long as we confess our sins to the Lord and repent, he will forgive us. In the book of Romans, it says, Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifies. Who is he that condemns? The Lord has already forgiven all of our sins and doesn't see us as sinners, so we are no longer in sin. Right. Doesn't that mean we can enter the kingdom of heaven? True. That's what all the pastors and elders have been saying. They say what? <clears throat> God's love is limitless <laughs> and his grace is infinite. And it doesn't matter if we've sinned in the past, present, or if we sin in the future. As long as we come before the Lord, confess and repent, the Lord will forgive us. And when the Lord comes, he will lift us directly into the kingdom of heaven. Oh, wow, Mom, that's a good impression. <laughs> well, I've heard it a lot. But Mom, if we go by this idea that the Lord's sin offering is forever effective, then it doesn't matter that we sin, the Lord forgives us. Oh. In the Bible it says, for if we sin willfully after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remains no more sacrifice for sins, but a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation, which shall devour the adversaries. Now, how do we explain this? Well... Oh my! You mean, if we don't practice the Lord's words and sin intentionally, the Lord still condemns us? That's right, Mom. Sit down. Mom, Dad, think about it. 
If we can enter the kingdom of heaven simply because we've had our sins forgiven, it means everyone who believes in the Lord Jesus can enter the kingdom of heaven. Yeah. So why did the Lord Jesus say, not everyone that said to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that does the will of my Father which is in heaven. He also said, many are called, but few are chosen. The kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and the violent take it by force. So how would those words be fulfilled? Right. Also, when the Lord returns in the last days, he will separate the sheep from the goats, the wheat from the tares, and the good servants from the evil. Oh, how will those prophecies be fulfilled? Oh my. The Lord Jesus says it all very clearly. Just because our sins are forgiven doesn't mean we'll enter the kingdom of heaven. Ugh, I don't understand how we miss something so important. <coughs> What's the matter now? Suen, please keep going. He wants you to continue. <laughs> Dad, Mom, the sin offering is eternally effective, but we have to look at for who. It is not for everyone. It's only effective eternally for those who achieve actual genuine repentance. People who love the truth and truly want to practice the Lord's words. Because their nature is sinful, they still involuntarily lie and sin. Sometimes they rebel against the Lord. Those things are forgiven. But if we've clearly learned the truth and deliberately sin, the sin offering is no longer effective, and we can't enter the kingdom of heaven. Don't you think what I'm saying is true? Yes, it really is true. Then tell me, who exactly can enter the kingdom of heaven? Hmm? About the people in the kingdom of heaven, the Lord Jesus said, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Not everyone that said to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that does the will of my Father which is in heaven. Mm. The Lord's words couldn't be any clearer. Only those who achieve true repentance and do God's will can enter the kingdom of heaven. Oh, so that's how it is. Yeah. You say only those who achieve true repentance and do God's will can enter the kingdom of heaven. That fits the Lord's <sighs> words. Now tell me, for the years we've believed, We've been humble, tolerant, suffered, and borne the cross according to the Lord's requirements. We've preached and worked for the Lord. And even when we suffer persecution or are imprisoned, we don't deny the Lord's name. Mm. Tell me, aren't those all signs of repentance? Right. As believers in the Lord, we can admit that we are sinners. When we sin, we are able to go before the Lord, weep, repent, pray, and confess all of our sins. Mm. We beg for forgiveness. Now... Isn't that considered repentance? Mom, Dad, it's true that after we believe in the Lord, we do some good deeds, but we still often rebel against and resist the Lord. We are often arrogant, self-centered, and greedy, and are concerned with vanity. We often have envy and hate in our hearts, and we can still lie and deceive. Even when we pray, we say flattering things to appease the Lord. Is, is that genuine repentance? The Lord Jesus demands that we be honest people, but are we really? The Lord Jesus requires that we love God with all our heart, mind, and soul, and that we love others. Do we do that? We can't practice the Lord's words or keep the Lord's commandments. <laughs> Is that genuine repentance? It really isn't. <sighs> Honey, our daughter is right. When we sin, we weep, go before the Lord, and pray and confess. Right? But what happens after that? Well, let me tell you what happens. We wipe our eyes clean, stand up, and keep lying and right. sinning. But that's only regret. There's no change. Ah, <sighs> We all say Christ is the Lord of my house. But actually, we all want to be the ones in charge. I don't submit to you, and you don't submit to me. <clears throat> we hold ourselves way above others and try to make everyone else listen to us. Stop. During meetings and sermons, we often put our labors on display. We show off to make others look up to us and admire Enough. us. Come on, aren't we clothing ourselves in sin and covered in guilt? <sighs> it's true. This is how we are. And we still want to enter the kingdom of heaven. Right. Give your father time to think, okay? Everything my daughter says is true. In the last few years, I have done some work for the Lord and done some good deeds, but always in a way that
that puts me on display and puts others down. When I preach and work, I often show off to make others look up to me. I pray to the Lord and confess, but afterward, I do the same things again. That isn't true repentance at all. Come on, Mude, really? Just standing here mumbling to yourself? There's a saying, the deeper the well, the cleaner the water. The more openly you share things, the more clear they become. The more that we fellowship on the truth, the brighter our hearts become. Isn't that right? <laughs> we should listen to her, shouldn't we? I've been listening. Huh? Did it sink in? <laughs> Look what you're asking, huh? How, how unreasonable. Do you think I am? Huh. You could have fooled me. Sun. Dad. Everything you've said so far has made perfect sense to me. Uh, and uh, I've been listening. Oh, thanks be to God. Huh. I'd like you to tell me more mm. about what genuine repentance specifically refers mm. to. Dad, do you remember how Matthew 22, 37 to 39 goes? Mm. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. Mm. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like mm. to it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Amen. <laughs> There's also this prophecy. Blessed are they that do his commandments, mm. that they have the right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. Based on the Lord's words as I understand it, genuine repentance refers to when people no longer sin or resist God. Mm. When the sinful natures within us have been cleansed, when we can practice God's words, live by God's words, and no longer rebel against God. When we expend for God purely out of love, without trying to make an exchange. And when everything we do is to obey God and repay His love. That's true repentance and will help us enter God's kingdom. <sighs> That's completely right. Mm. Dad, think about it. Which of us believers in the Lord has achieved genuine repentance? Well... Think about those famous spiritual people and the pastors. Even though they are familiar with the Bible, can labor and work, and outwardly do some good deeds, hmm. who among them has escaped the bondage of sin and achieved genuine repentance? You're right. It seems like there actually aren't any. Right. For years, we've wanted to escape sin. Mm. But why can't we make it? It's really a problem. Mm. Why can't believers in the Lord escape the bondage of sin? Reading passages from Almighty God will help us understand. Mm. Okay. Sure. <sighs> okay, here. I'll ah. read the first one. <laughs> sure. <laughs> but wait, I'm... Out of the way. Sometimes I mm. can't believe you. <clears throat> Though Jesus did much work among man, he only completed the redemption of all mankind and became man's sin offering and did not rid man of all his corrupt disposition, fully saving man from the influence of Satan. Not only required Jesus to take on the sins of man as the sin offering, but also required God to do greater work to completely rid man of his disposition, which has been corrupted by Satan. And so, after man was forgiven his sins, God has returned to flesh to lead man into the new age and begun the work of chastisement and judgment. And this work has brought man into a higher realm. <sighs> Amen. I'll read the next one. <clears throat> a sinner such as you, who has just been redeemed and has not been changed or been perfected by God, can you be after God's heart? Within, you are beset by impurity, selfish, and mean. Yet you still wish to descend with Jesus. You should be so lucky. Yes. You have missed a step in your belief in God. You have merely been redeemed, but have not been changed. For you to be after God's heart, God must personally do the work of changing and cleansing you. If you are only redeemed, you will be incapable of attaining sanctity. In this way, you will be unqualified to share in the good blessings of God. For you have missed out a step in God's work of managing man. 
which is the key step of changing and perfecting. And so you, a sinner who has just been redeemed, are incapable of directly inheriting God's inheritance. Amen. Oh, yeah. wow. This makes everything so clear, it does. doesn't it? Almighty God's words reveal all the mysteries of God's work. Mm. In the age of grace, the Lord Jesus only did the work of redemption, mm. only forgave people's sins. Mm. He didn't resolve our sinful natures and satanic dispositions. Ah. Our sinful natures are the root cause of why we sin and resist God. There's something more serious and more stubborn than sin itself. Mm. That's absolutely right. If we don't resolve our satanic natures, there's no way for us to achieve genuine repentance. Mm. Hey, Mom, Dad, mm? I'll give you an example and you'll understand. Uh, sure. Okay. So, consider if a thief was caught and was brought before a merciful judge. And the judge wanted to give the thief another chance, so he forgave the thief's crime. That doesn't mean that the thief wouldn't steal again after he was let go, right? No. And that doesn't mean the thief's nature has changed, right? <laughs> no. Of course mm. not. There's the saying, can a leopard change his spots? Mm. If his thieving nature doesn't change, he'll go stealing all over again. Exactly. Hey, so mm. that was actually a, a very good metaphor, huh? huh? <laughs> the Lord Jesus told us that he would return. Mm. His return is to do the work of completely purifying and saving mankind. Mm. Almighty God's come in the last days, and on the basis of the Lord Jesus' work of redemption, he has expressed the truth and begun the work of judgment beginning with God's house mm. to resolve our sinful natures and satanic dispositions. Ah, uh, thanks, thanks be, be to God. God. <laughs> <laughs> We've been corrupted too deeply. Mm. We are full of satanic dispositions, and we often resist and rebel against God. Right. Merely having our sins forgiven is far from enough. Indeed. We need to experience God's judgment and chastisement to see the truth of how deeply we have been corrupted by Satan. Truly come to loathe ourselves and genuinely repent to God. We need that before we can practice and live by God's word and become people who can truly obey God and do God's will. That's how we gain full salvation and enter the kingdom of heaven. Thanks be to God. That's right. God's work of salvation is so practical. Hmm. It looks like if we want to escape the bondage of sin, genuinely repent and enter the kingdom of heaven, we still need to undergo God's further work of judgment and purification. That's right. Yes. <sighs> Many years I've believed in the Lord and relied on ideas and notions. I thought if the Lord forgives my sins, I will enter God's kingdom, and that being saved once means being saved forever. That's why, when people testified the last day's work of Almighty God, I didn't seek or investigate. Huh. I nearly missed my chance to welcome the Lord. Dad. Yes, you did. In matter of entering the kingdom of heaven, I didn't listen to the Lord's words. Instead, I listen to the pastors and elders. Hey, now. I've, I've been so stupid. So, uh, Dad. You're a bit smarter than us, huh? You managed to welcome the Lord and be lifted up before the throne before us. Thanks yes. be to God. It truly fulfills the Lord's prophecy. So the last shall, shall be, be first, and, and the first last. last. Mude. We're going to have to catch up to them, huh? Uh, but we just can't pursue by ourselves. What? We have to bring all the brothers and sisters in the church with us. Yes. <laughs> Dad, are you saying that? After we eat dinner, I'll call the brothers and sisters together to study almighty God's work of the <laughs> last <laughs> days. Grandma, Grandma, huh? why do I smell something burning? Oh no, my chicken! Your memory is really so... Mom, I'll help you. Take it easy. 